Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, hi, my name is Unpolitech Momoka, and on this channel we talk about all things crafts and crochet. So if you're into crochet and crafting and the life that goes with someone who's into crochet and crafting, you're in the right place because that's my jam. Okay, we're doing something a little different today. According to the algorithm for my channel, you guys like three things. You like when I do pattern tutorials. You like when I review yarn and gadgets, and you like when I rant. Um, so today you're getting a little bit of the rant portion, because I don't have a tutorial in a good place yet, and I do have a review that I was planning on doing, but it's going to take a little longer to film than I thought I was going to. So today you get sort of a rant with a twist. Um, I'm sure most of you are, are aware of Reddit and you're aware of the, we'll say, am I the jerk posts with A-I-T-A -A on there. And there's a bunch of crochet related ones on there. So I figured we could, you know, I could read a couple and give you my take on them and you can leave your opinion in the comments. So that's what we're going to do for this video, because why not? So, okay, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading them off of my phone. It's such a glare, but yeah, they're on my phone. So, I'm just going to read these, and then I'll give you um, my opinion. So, here's the first one. Am I the jerk for taking back a shawl my wife made for a bride-to-be after she was uninvited from the wedding? Okay, so, my wife, Lena, crochets a lot and often gifts it to friends and family. When her second oldest brother got married, she made the bride a shawl to wear over her dress in the evening. The bride loved it, and ever since, Lena has made shawls for everyone in her family getting married. Now, Lena's oldest brother, George, is getting married again. Lena doesn't have a relationship with George as he was abusive to her as a child, but if she has to see him, then she is polite but distant with him. She doesn't want to cut off the rest of her family because of George. I work with George, and while we aren't friends, we are friendly at work. Lena encouraged this. When George got moved to my team, I was going to request a transfer, not wanting to expose Lena to George as my teams do a lot of get-togethers with our significant others. As it is a family wedding, Lena's mom asked her if she could crochet a shawl for George's fiance, and Lena agreed. It was arranged that once it was finished, I would take it to work to give to George so that Lena didn't have to see him. Earlier this week, the shawl was completed and I emailed George at work to let him know that I would bring it in today as the wedding is tomorrow. When I got into work this morning, I gave George a shawl and let him know that Lena and I were looking forward to the wedding. Come lunchtime, Lena called to let me know that George's fiance had called her and told her that she was no longer invited to the wedding, citing the place they are having the wedding and the reception is too small for the number of staff coming, so are having to make cutbacks. However, I was still invited to the wedding. I was mad at this because they clearly only invited Lena to get a shawl, which to me is just rude. If they had asked Lena outright to make one, she probably would have done be because she loves to crochet. On my way out of work, I noticed George wasn't at his desk, but the shawl was. I was still mad that they had used Lena to get a shawl, and I just shoved it in my work bag. I left a note on his desk telling George, since Lena was no longer invited, the shawl and I would no longer be attending either. On my way home, I told Lena what I had done and asked her if she wanted to go out instead so not to waste having a sitter. Lena was upset that I had taken a shawl as it was causing an uproar in her family group chat when people were calling her petty because I took it back. Lena wants me to give it back. I don't think I should. They don't deserve Lena's kindness. However, at the same time, I don't want Lena to be upset with me over George and a shawl. Am I the jerk for taking back the shawl? edit. I have messaged the group chat letting them know that I took it and if they should be pissed at anyone then it should be me but I would also do it again because no one gets to be a jerk to Lena. Well that was fun. 
So to summarize, Lena and her brother don't get along, but her brother was getting married and, and the family wanted her to make the, a shawl for her brother's fiance. She agreed. So she makes the shawl. And in Magic Lab, she makes the shawl. She's uninvited to the wedding. So her husband takes the shawl back. Okay, normally I'm for like each person deals with their own family. But in this case, I could see why the, the husband took the shawl back. You know, I, I get it because as far as he's concerned, um, even though he works with George, George is being a jerk to who is his sister, but also happens to be VOP's wife. So, yeah, he was defending his wife. And personally, I think that's cool. So, yeah, I would not rate him the jerk, and they did not rate him the jerk either on, on the post. Um, they didn't deserve the shawl. They didn't deserve the kindness that Lena put into making that shawl. So, the fact that he took it back, cool beans to me. But let me know what you all think in the comments. Let's see. Here's the next one. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend her blankets are pretty useless and impractical? I think I already knew the answer to this, but we're going to read it anyway. I, 29 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 28 female, for eight months. My girlfriend has many hobbies, among them are crocheting and volunteering at a harm reduction center in our city. I won't pretend to know a lot about crochet because I've never done it, and she's the first person I know who does. Her work at the harm reduction center is simply badass, though. She is really good at it and has saved someone's life before from an overdose. For the past couple of weeks, she's been working a lot on blankets for the regulars in her center. I guess she does this every year when it starts to get cold out. She gets donations to buy yarn and then makes blankets for people in their favorite colors and then designs she thinks they would like. Blankets are her favorite things to make, so this is like a fun thing for her to get to do. I was blown away by how much money she spent on yarn this year, close to $500, and even though it's mostly not her money, I was just flabbergasted. The thing is that even though the stuff she makes is pretty, that's about all it is. I've never personally reached for one of the blankets she made for her apartment because when I look at them, they just have a lot of holes and gaps in them. I'm not sure it's... I'm not sure if it's a design thing, but that type of blanket is basically for show. How warm can it be when, if you stretch it out at all, you're making gaps in it. Okay. I'm going to reserve my comments to the end. So I brought this up to her because I feel like with that much money, you can buy better blankets for cheaper and then use the rest to buy stuff for the center. And that her blankets wouldn't do anything to keep someone warm on the streets. She said that this is something all of the regulars look forward to every year because they need the blankets, but they also love having something that was handmade special for them. And some of them haven't had that in ages after living on the streets for so long. I said that that was fine, but a good feeling from the gift isn't enough to keep them warm. She said I was being obtuse, that they are warm, and that I always wear the scarf and hat she made me aren't those warm but those are different because they're things you wrap tightly around yourself. She went back to her place upset and frustrated because she feels like I am intentionally not listening, but I feel like if you guys could see the stuff she's making, you'd agree with me that they are completely useless blankets. Oh, dear God. I don't know where to start with this. First of all, I'm not even pretend that I, that I, I completely understand the science of it, but I do know that the holes in crocheted and knit blankets contribute to the warmth of the blanket. It has something to do with the thermal dynamics of it, the, of, the, of the, the air being able to go in and out. It, it warms the, the, the atmosphere around it. Again, I'm not going to pretend to go into the science. I just know that that part is true. Um, and it's obvious that he has never picked up one of her blankets because otherwise he'd know this. He 
he would know that, you know, that yes, there are holes in it. But yeah, if you put it on you and you snuggle up, you will be warm. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're, she's not making like one that's huge. Like we're not, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not talking a filet crochet blanket, you know, for outdoors. It's probably just like, you know, double crochet, probably some chevrons, maybe some granny squares, you know, all of which will keep you warm if the blanket's big enough. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's if, if you can wrap yourself in it, you know, kind of like when you wear a scarf. Um, yeah. Uh, and I had to laugh at the, he was, he was flabbergasted at the $500 that she spent on yarn. I know a lot of you out there are going, $500? I, I, I spent that in a couple of months. What is your point? So he is a complete and total, yeah, obtuse. His girlfriend was right. He's obtuse because he is totally clueless about how crochet works, the thermodynamics behind it, and 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 the whole point that his girlfriend made that for these people they look forward to it because it's one of the only handmade things that they're ever going to see in their lives, especially since they're living on the streets. So yeah, he was rated the jerk, and he adds an edit. Okay, okay, I'm the jerk. I'll take my judgment. I posted pics of the blanket she sent me on profile because people asked. I still don't know if I'd use one, but I understand people are them warm still. Uh, let me see if I see the pictures. Uh, oh, this is a road. This is the old post, so the picture is gone. But anyway, apparently the pictures were enough for everybody to definitely agree that he is the jerk. So, and I agree with that, he's a jerk. And didn't even bother to like educate himself before he came over here and started yapping his gums and sounding stupid. And no wonder his girlfriend left in frustration because I, 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 I would have wanted to strangle him with one of my handmade blankets at this point. Or taking that handmade scarf and wrapped it around this, no, you know what, never mind. <laughs> No, no, okay. I we're gonna move on. <laughs> I, let's see, what's another one? Okay, here's one. Am I the jerk for not wanting to knit or crochet anything for my family? So I'm 16 and I knit and crochet and I've made a few things and I'm currently knitting myself a cape. And my grandma has been bugging me to make my great aunt, who's dying of cancer, a blanket or a hat or both. They just want me to keep making them things that take a lot of time. And I honestly don't want to for many reasons. And one of the reasons is that they've never liked me and they treated me like crap growing up. My grandma keeps reminding my mom of something because, wait. My grandma keeps reminding my mom of something because he's adorable. I'm not trying to understand that. Even other family members that I haven't seen in a year have been sending me requests on what to make them. And my aunt wanted me to make her a big, chunky, hand-knitted blanket. But I'm not going to do that because, A, that's going to be expensive. And I already know I'm not getting paid. And B, I don't know how to hand knit. And C, I don't have time for that. My mom has been pressuring me to make my great aunt at least a hat, but I've told her many times before I'm not making none of them anything because I'd rather make her, my dad, and sister something, but not anyone else. But she still wants me to make my great aunt something. And I told my mom we could just buy a crocheted hat and make her think it's from me, but I don't even want to waste my money on something for her. But am I the jerk? No, you're not the jerk. Because here's the thing, we are not required to make things for people. You know, we can make things out of the goodness of our heart. We can make things because somebody's paying us to make them. We could make one, make something, you know, for whether any reason that we come up with. But the bottom line is, 
we are not required to make something for somebody, especially if we're if if, if we're doing it out of our own pocket. No. So no, she's not, she's not required. And she's not the trick for refusing, especially if she's if what she's saying is true that they have been nothing but un, but unkind to her most of her life. Why why why, why would somebody want to go all the way to make some for people who are jerks to them? You know why? If I was going to do that, it would be how the this itchy fiber I could find that I knew would make them absolutely miserable. And then that probably make them a full body suit, but that's just me. Okay, stop. But no, we are not required to make things for people if we don't want to make them. And if they don't like that, that's their problem. Not mine, not yours, not theirs. Or I mean, by theirs, I mean the original, the DOP here. So no, not to jerk. And the, and the threat agrees, not to jerk. But it amazes me how people will just pile on like that. No. No, they treated you like crap. I'm sorry that they're dying of cancer. Doesn't mean they deserve you to make them something. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's move on to like one or two more. Let's see. Here's one. Am I the jerk for hating crochet? And this is actually a follow up to the one I'm really going to read, which is Am I the jerk for telling my sister in law it's rude to crochet everywhere? Here we go. My sister-in-law does crochet. It's literally become her personality. She started doing it after her and my brother experienced a second trimester loss earlier this year. Now she does it everywhere. I work in the same place she does and I've seen her crocheting at her desk during her breaks and lunch. My brother says it's how she relaxes. Apparently it helps calm her busy mind. Every week or so, we have family dinners over at my parents' house. Since sister-in-law has been crocheting, she brings it with her. She just sits in the corner after dinner working on a project. My brother often sits with her and they'll talk quietly. Both her and my brother are quite introverted. If she ends up sitting with my wife or another sister-in-law, she's crocheting. I recently invited her and my brother to watch a film at mine and again, I guess their house. And again, she was she sat crocheting through the whole film. It's rude because she's not paying attention to anyone. Tonight, my brother posted a picture of them where they were out having a couple of drinks in the pub. Yet again, she was crocheting. It was on the table in the picture. In the comment, she was joking with her friends that she'll be able to see where her whip that she got wear on her whip that she got drunk as it'll be all dropped stitches and she'll have to start again. Her social media is full of posts about crochet, about what she's working on, the yarn or pattern she's bought, or the trips she and my brother take to go to specific yarn stores. I've had enough of her being rude and I commented under the post that it was rude that she kept crocheting everywhere and she needed to stop so being so antisocial all the time. She didn't comment back, but one of her friends did telling me to F off and that we could crochet wherever and whenever she wants. She could crochet wherever and whenever she wants. I responded by saying in this, that case, crocheting is banned in my house, so she'll have to socialize in the future. My brother deleted my comments before sister-in-law got to see them. I know this because he told me when he messaged me telling me that I was being a prick and her crocheting wasn't hurting anyone. He said that she's currently crocheting all the time because she's making gifts for family and friends. BS, because we don't do gifts for adults in the family anymore. 
He told me that they wouldn't be coming around anymore until I apologize, sister-in-law. I'm not apologizing because it's rude not to be giving people your full attention. Am I the jerk for telling my sister-in-law that it's rude to crochet everywhere? Oh, he's a jerk. <laughs> um, she's going through something. She's trying to recover from a tragic and horrific event. She's chosen to crochet as her way to do so. Yes, you can crochet and talk at the same time. And I hate to disappoint this idiot, but if she's in a frame of mind where she's crocheting and not talking to anybody, even if she wasn't crocheting, she probably still would not be talking to anybody because she's just not up to it right now. And that's fine. Leave her alone. You are the jerk. And it sounds like you're not just a jerk, you're a hater. What, you jealous that she has something that she's good at and you're not? What is your problem? It's crochet. It's a hook. It's some yarn. It's a very silent activity. You can talk and crochet at the same time. And again, if she's not doing that, it's because she doesn't want to talk to you. I guess that didn't occur to him, you know. Maybe the reason why she does other things when he's around is because she doesn't want to deal with him. And if this post is anything like his personality, I can see why. I would probably take up a hobby just not to talk to him too. So yeah, he's the jerk. Big jerk. To the point where those of you that are uh, familiar with Reddit, this was moved to the Am I the Devil area. So, and that's where some of the most, the, the, the jerks of the jerks, that's where their posts end up. So yes, he was found to be the jerk and just, wow. Talk about a lack of compassion for his sister-in-law and his brother. I mean, wow. She's crocheting. Oh boy. whoop de doo And she's making things for friends and family. But the friends and family, we don't we don't exchange adult gifts. Well, maybe she's bringing the tradition back. Or maybe she just needs something to do with the stuff she's making. Because as she's coping and she's making all this stuff, she's collecting it, she's got to do something with it. So she's gifting it to people. So I'm Somehow I'm willing to bet that you will be the very last person that she gifts anything to, if she gifts you anything at all. And if she does gift you anything at all, more power to her. I don't blame her. I wouldn't either. What a jerk. <laughs> Big jerk. Massive jerk. Don't even, I don't think... His level of jerkiness can be measured. But again, let me know what you think in the comments. All right, let's do one more. Let's see. No, okay, let's try this one. This is the last one. Am I the jerk for not crocheting something for my two best friends? Okay, it says English isn't my first language, so sorry for any errors. In the middle of summer break, I started to crochet. I wasn't very good at it. I'm still learning, but I can make a mean beanie within a week. I have two best friends that I've known for five years. Cassie, who is also my roommate, whom I share my dorm room with, and Zoe, who also has a room across from us. When the girls learned of my new hobby, they started making fun of me, calling me a grandma and other offensive words, telling me it's a very stupid idea and that I just wasted time and money on it. They even went as far as calling me grandma in public and in their contact info and posted a picture of me with an insulting caption. A major incident happened where they used all the yarn I had as a makeshift rag drying clothes rope when they spilled a bottle of ink on the floor while I wasn't there and got mad at me when I blew up at them. Two days after the incident, I gifted our classmate a tote bag and made 
before and a keychain as a birthday gift. She absolutely loved it and went telling everyone that I am a master at crochet, etc. Zoe and Cassie changed after this, always asking if I was making something for them, always saying backside remarks like, oh my god, I would just love a handmade bag, etc. They even started sending me pics of crochet patterns and projects that are way too advanced for me and telling me how they want the same thing but in their favorite color, etc. The straw that brought the camels back was when I gifted my teacher matching blankets, pink and lavender after she gave birth to twin girls. Zoe and Cassie got very mad, calling me a selfish itch who puts her teacher before her best friend and that they thought I was making something for Zoe's mother, who was also pregnant. None of us know the gender yet. They demanded I make something to fix this mess since Zoe already told her mom I was making her a blanket and I refused. They're giving me the cold shoulder now, and Cassie even requested a roommate change. People are telling me I shouldn't ruin a five-year relationship with just a hobby. Am I the jerk? No. No. They made fun of you for crocheting, called you a grandma, made all kinds of disparaging comments, even ruined some of your yarn, and then when somebody that is their age loved something you made and branded and raved about it, suddenly then it was cool and, and they wanted it then. Well, you know what? Tough luck. You shouldn't have made fun of your friend. I mean, a hobby is a hobby. So what? You didn't? You thought it was an old grandma hobby? Okay, fine. But there's no reason for you to like be mean about it. And then just to turn around and want her to do stuff for you. That's the irony. I mean, you, you you ragged on her and made fun of her and ruined her stuff, and then you want to turn around and ask her for stuff. It, no, it doesn't work that way. You ruined your chances of getting stuff when you ruined her yarn, basically, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and as for the one who told their mom, promised a blanket, well, then I suggest you learn how to control You Yeah, I suggest you learn how to crochet and make a blanket for your mom. I'm going to tell you. But no, the OP is not the jerk. Again, I said this earlier, but no one is required to make anything for anybody. Especially if the people they are making it for were jerked to them previously. So you don't get to go around, you, you don't get to go from calling her a grandma to calling her a crochet genius. It, no, not without a whole lot of apologies and mea culpas and and, and buying yarn that you replacing yarn that you ruined, plus any other thing you could think of to try to make amends. So if I, if I were the OP, I, no, I would never make you anything ever, 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 ever. ever. Even if, if I became a, a, a professional crocheter and became rich and famous doing it, I would still never give you anything. Nope. Matter of fact, I don't think I would even let you commission anything. No, you would never see a crochet piece for me. Ever. So, again, I guess you, I suggest you pick up some yarn on the hook and learn how to crochet yourself. Because if you're waiting on me or this OP to do it for you, you got a long wait. Anyway, those are the stories from today. If you like this idea and you want to see me do it again, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like button. Um, if you didn't enjoy the, the, the video, you can hit the dislike button. I don't care. Our views are you, so thanks. Um, if you're new here and you think you might like my content, I do. This is a first for me. I normally do um, yarn and gadget reviews, pattern tutorials, stitch tutorials, stuff like that. But I'm going to start incorporating more stuff like this because I think it's kind of fun. Especially if you guys agree with me and you tell me that in the comments. But if you think you would like my channel and the stuff that I provide, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you know when I upload a video. Lately, I've been uploading videos on either Thursday and Friday. And I think I like the schedule, so I'm probably going to stick with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, yeah, I normally upload videos on Thursdays or Fridays. Um, but if you hit the bell icon, you'll know when I upload a video. Because sometimes I, I do a random one here and there. I also post on Substack. And I also 
do some cross posting on um, Kofi and buymeacoffee.com. And if you'd like to support, help me support my channel, because this stuff isn't cheap. StreamYard isn't cheap. Yarn isn't cheap. Gat buying gadgets isn't cheap. So if you really like me doing all that stuff and you'd like to support my channel, go ahead and buy me a coffee or uh, support me on coffee.com. Um, <laughs> you know, um, it, even my, my, my PayPal me is, 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 is link is in my description as well, in the description box, um, as well as all my other socials. So thanks for being here. This was fun. Again, if you like this idea, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and I will keep incorporating stuff like this. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.